see if I did any good cooking it. I hope you did. It looks juicy. Well, what's up guys? This is Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and uh, today is exciting. I'm, <laughs> uh, I love it. So before we get too far into this, today's video is brought to you by Xmark Mowers. Awesome, incredible mowers. And uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of cooking because deer season has, well, it's not officially over. Archery season it runs through uh, January 15th, but deer season is winding down for us. We're not gonna be harvesting any more deer, but we do have a freezer full of fresh venison, fresh deer meat. So we're gonna do a little cooking today. I'm gonna cook a deer back strap. It's pretty much, well, for the most part, it's either gonna be a homegrown, home gathered, meal all but maybe the potatoes so we're going to cook a deer back strap <clears throat> have a little fresh hand-picked salad from the greenhouse and some potatoes cook everything up on a pit boss grill today and uh, this is my one of my favorite things about deer season is enjoying the food and a couple you know up until a couple years ago i was a terrible cook when it came to venison i could i could uh, there was a few recipes i do but like back straps, which are the tenderloins, the two strips of meat off the either side of the, the back of an animal. Usually you'd cut them open, fill them with uh, peppers, cream cheese, and wrap it in bacon. And I still enjoy that, it's still good. But having a, a, a pellet grill has changed the way I cook venison. And it just makes it so much better. And the main key is don't overcook it. You don't wanna overcook your venison. So anyways, I got the uh, back strap out of the freezer last night and let it thaw out <clears throat> and uh, marinated it for the last two or three hours. And we're gonna throw it on the Pit Boss grill for probably about two hours. We're not necessarily smoking it. We're just gonna cook it kind of low and slow, get it up to about 120, 125 degrees. And uh, it's just gonna be amazing, I promise you. Okay, so my deer back strap has been marinating for the last couple hours. Got it out of the refrigerator and we're gonna season it up. And I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do also on the Pit Boss Grill with our deer steak or our deer uh, back strap. So as far as the marinade goes, use whatever you like. I'm not real picky when it comes to marinade. This was something I found at our local grocery store today. Uh, it's Lowry's Steak and Chop with garlic and cracked black pepper. And then I'm gonna season this back strap with some steak and burger seasoning. So I'm gonna get it seasoned up, ready to go on the grill. We're gonna cook it, you know, not over direct heat for probably, like I said, hour and a half, two hours, something like that, get it up to 125 degrees internal temperature. Okay, my back strap's ready to grow on, go on the grill. So we're gonna do some, some potatoes in a foil packet. These are just little small baby potatoes. I'm gonna mix in about half a yellow onion and a few carrots. So first thing I'm gonna do is put down a little extra virgin olive oil, get my potatoes, carrots, onions all in here. I'm just gonna wrap it up in a little packet and throw it on the grill and let them uh, basically steam cook on the grill. potatoes and carrots in the middle of the grill that heats right here in the center and we're going to take this back strap and kind of put it off to the side if I can get under it get in there now we're going to cook this at about 250 degrees 
for probably an hour, hour and a half, and then I'll bump up the temperature. We just don't want to cook that that deer meat too fast. So low and slow, and don't overdo it. So while those cook, I want to show you something. I did. Uh, we did have a very successful deer season this year. My daughter Emily, my son Houston, and myself all harvested some really nice bucks on our own property and uh, we just had european mounts done on all of them i don't have them hung on the wall displayed anywhere but here's emily's deer her little really nice eight point here's houston's deer it was actually a nine point had a little kicker off of that g2 right there and then here's the big buck i killed they all turned out fabulous they look amazing as european mounts and uh the goal at some point anyways is to refinish that wall in my shop we've, we've got several you know shoulder mounts like this scattered but i want to put everything in one spot so we'll hang all of our european mounts up all of our shoulder mounts everything on one big wall in our shop eventually i hope <laughs> Go get us some greens for a nice little salad. Everything's a little, not everything, several things are a little wilted right now. Um, we had some extreme cold and got down, oh, a little too cold for what some of this stuff likes, but there's still a lot of good, a lot of good lettuce, a lot of good spinach still under here. We'll pick off some of those wilted leaves. And this is a uh, a romaine lettuce, so should be able to get some good romaine hearts out of there. Picked a few leaves and just let it continue growing. A few little small kale leaves off the top. The kale can handle the cold amazingly it takes a lot of cold temperatures to really damage this kale the spinach is not looking the best right now but uh as far as just making a salad there's there's plenty of good spinach here and uh most of this should perk back up we'll get it watered good and uh It'll perk back up in a few days. There'll be some damage to it, but it can take a lot of cold also. But that should be plenty for DJ and I. All right, well, the meat and potatoes of the meal should be done. Go ahead and pull these off, off the heat. I came out earlier and flipped that. Listen to it. Oh, I have a feeling this is going to be incredibly juicy and tender. Now for the main event, let this back strap rest for about 10 minutes or so, and uh, we'll see if I did any good cooking it. I hope you did. It looks juicy. Psycho. Smelled it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's as home cooked, homegrown as it gets, other than the potatoes. Yeah. Everything else was sourced right here on our property. Now, my wife here is not a fan of rare to medium rare cooked meat, oh. but I have learned with cooking deer, do not overcook it because then you turn it into like a leather boot. It's really good. Trust me. I'm going for it. It is good. It's a little gamey. Well, you're eating a about a four-year-old buck. Last year, we let Houston kill a one-year-old doe. Yeah, 
I don't want to hear it. It's the best tasting deer you ever had. It was. This was this was Emily's big buck she killed this year, so. Okay. It is a little gaming. So I'll struggle with that. But it is good flavor. You did okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess my wife says I did okay. What about the potatoes and the carrots? Have you tried those? Mm hmm Turn out pretty good. Homegrown salad? Mm-hmm. Okay. We didn't make the cheese or the croutons, but. Hey, now, it's not 100%, but it's extremely tender for an older age buck. It's delicious. See, the problem is, is my wife gets so used to eating the fresh homegrown beef that we put so much time and energy into raising that she expects a deer to taste like beef. That would be perfect. That would be my And the problem is, is a deer tastes like a deer and a cow tastes like a cow. I prefer cow. <laughs> well, there you have it. White-tailed deer, back strap. I mean, I love it. I love the taste of deer. Venison doesn't bother me a bit. My wife has a sensitive palate, so I have to be I have to, to be conscious of that when we're cooking deer meat in our, in our house because there are certain recipes that she just does not enjoy. I will say this, when it comes to deer, there is a different flavor. There is a little bit of a gamey flavor sometimes, and especially when it's an older buck. That's why last year when Houston and Emily both harvested does, they tasted phenomenal. Really? Can I talk for just a minute? The does just have a little bit better flavor, less gamey sometimes. But when you harvest a buck, there are steps you can take to make that meat taste better and less gamey. And it's really important how you handle that meat, how you handle the animal after the harvest, all the way through the moment that it goes in the freezer. And then even after it comes out of the freezer when you thaw it and all that. But uh, I absolutely love the fact that we can come out here on our own property and harvest animals to put food in our freezer for our family. It just, it gives me a huge sense of pride and uh, to be able to get out here with my kids and watch my kids hunt and harvest an animal and understand that <clears throat> they're taking a life and that life is gonna go to feed our family. That's important to me, that's awesome, it's incredible. And it's just a great feeling. But uh, anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Huge thank you to Xmark Mowers for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to go check out xmark.com slash backyard. There'll also be a link in the description box. And uh, there's all kinds of stuff on their website. It's not just mowing and, and lawn mowing type stuff. There's all kinds of backyard cooking, grilling stuff. And my buddy Mike Morgan has a ton of videos over there. All kinds of property maintenance, different stuff. So be sure to check that out. And once again, thanks to Xmark, Xmark Mowers for sponsoring today's video. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.